Welcome back, Chromebook gamers, to another episode of Cuck Me Curbs Coding Class. So, a, a couple weeks ago, we had just recorded the first episode of the Open Suspect podcast. Go subscribe, it's everywhere, and it's on YouTube if you want. I'll put a link in the description. But anyway, we had just recorded the first episode of the Open Suspect podcast. It was already up on YouTube, but I wanted to get it on an RSS feed. And so I looked into the various hosting options, and I couldn't find a platform that was right for us. So I was like, okay, I'll just use a template engine to generate us an RSS feed, and we'll throw it up on GitHub pages. That'll do the job. Well, I looked around, and I was like searching for stuff like Jamstack, but for RSS podcast feeds, and I was just finding absolutely nothing. And... I basically gave up on my whole Jamstack idea. It's not exactly Jamstack, but it's like, you know, it's kind of like Jamstack. Anyway, I was looking around, and I was like, okay, I guess not. We're just going to use Python to generate it. I don't know. And I was looking around, and I saw this question on Stack Overflow, and the wrong answer to the question was recommending this thing called Cheetah. And by chance, I was like, none of these other answers are any good for what I want, because this question isn't exactly what I need. And I saw that link to Cheetahs, and I was like, I might as well give it a shot. Well, I gave it a shot. The documentation, terrible. Some of the worst I've ever read. To the developers of Cheetah, I'm sorry. Your docs suck. I managed to get it working, and it's great. It's the best thing ever. I used it to generate that RSS feed template, and I was like, wow. This is the best thing ever. You just, like, compile it, and it's so cool, and it's super easy to add stuff to it, and then... I was like, okay, we need a landing page because when you go to podcast.opensuspect.com, it's just blank. So I made a landing page generator using Cheetah, and it's the best thing ever. You can make templates for literally anything that's text. It, this is so cool. I mean, the best. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's get started. It's been a while since I've used that intro. How long has it been? More than a month. Because, yeah, probably almost two months. Wow. The intro's going to start get old. Oh, by the way, I'm on Wayland now. The best thing since fried ice cream, the Wayland Windows Server. Such an amazing thing. And I got OBS working on it, and... It's so much better than X. Like, you think, well, it looks the same. Yeah, it looks the same. But it's just so much smoother and nicer. Also, by the way, if anybody knows how to fix this, I don't know why, but my icons are giant, and I couldn't figure out how to fix them. Anyway, we're using Cheetah 3, which is a fork of the original Cheetah template library. And you install it using pip, so you just go pip install cheetah 3. And now that I think about it, you probably want to run it with sudo so that it goes into the root or whatever. It doesn't matter, though. Install it with pip, and then you make a new file, and you call it subscribe, and then the file extension is tmpl, which I don't know what it stands for. Who cares? And then also, you'll probably want to install a syntax highlighter for Cheetah. I found one on the VS Code extension marketplace. I'll link that in the description too if you're not using VS Code. Whatever, the developers of Cheetah use Vim and Emacs. So if you use either of those, there's probably a plugin for that. Anyway, to set it up, you do hash from cheetah.template with a capital T import template and then you do hash extends template there you go that's how you set it up and cheetah uses very similar stuff to python yeah, but not exactly so to set a variable you do hash set then dollar sign and your variable name equals and then its value. It's very simple. And then if you want to use it in your template, you can just reference dollars variable, 
to do comments, it's a double hash. Da -da -da -da. And if you want to do multi-line comments, it's hash star your comment and then star hash. Kind of like in JavaScript, but with a hash instead of a slash. Anyway, I'm going to be making a thing that generates a list. So I'm going to do hash set dollar sign list very clever name equals and square brackets so that it's an array or a list or whatever you want to call it I don't care Python is weird cheetah is built using Python so you'd probably call it a list whatever and I'm just do name Book me curb caption super epic youtuber and then I'm gonna add another thing to the list so I can demonstrate this name nice micro caption also a super epic user I mean YouTuber, but epic in a different way. Okay, that's enough for now. I might add more later. Then I'm going to do set page title equals subscribe to these people and then now once you've set all your stuff you can actually start templating and here's where it gets interesting so you can make anything and it's technically built for HTML so like this syntax highlighter I got here will highlight your syntax as if it's HTML so you might not want it if you're generating something that's not HTML but Regardless, you just put your stuff in here. I'm going to just uh, set up my HTML document. Hang on. Okay, here's where it actually starts getting exciting. So, I'm going to have it so that the title is what's inside of this variable. And all you got to do to do that is just do dollar sign and the name of the variable you want to reference. Very nice, isn't it? Okay, up next h1 so since what I did was a list with multiple items and we don't want to use each one manually that would be dumb we're going to make a for loop so inside of this ol tag all we have to do to make a for loop is hash for and then person in dollar sign list and then you can set up person is not going to be an index number for all of you JavaScript developers here like me who get confused when you use Python and you're like what yeah this actually references this object not the objects ID unlike JavaScript what are we talking about Oh yeah, for loops. If you're a JavaScript developer, then you're stupid and you should do it the Python way because we're using something that's Python. So make a list item and I'm gonna do H4 and then you'll just do dollar sign person since that's what you defined it as right here. Very nice. Dot name since this is a object or as Python calls it, a dictionary it's a dictionary not an object this is not JavaScript it's Python okay just just wanted to clarify that in case you hadn't noticed yet now person dot also I don't think you need to have these quotation marks I did them but but I don't think you actually need them we'll find out I don't know I've never actually tested it without the quotation marks so that'll be interesting and then I will close the list item tag and then you just do end for hash end for to you know 
let Cheetah know that the for loop is over. And then we can close the ol and the body and the HTML. And you can literally make this for any text, okay? I'm just using HTML because it's like the default thing for Cheetah, but I used it for RSS and you can use it for whatever you want. It's extremely versatile. Anything you want to auto-generate, you can probably do it with Cheetah if it's text. So, how do we turn this into an actual HTML file? Well, it's very simple, very simple. All you got to do is do cheetah fill subscribe.tmpl, press enter, and I made a syntax error. So this will show you what debugging this stuff is like. It shows you what you did wrong. I had a quote there that shouldn't have been there. Run that again. Ah! Okay. So, you do have to have these in quotes. Put these things in quotes. Don't listen to what I say. I always did it in quotes. And, in fact, it probably I did do it without quotes the first time. And I just forgot. Anyway, cheetah fill and bam auto-generated HTML, just like that. But what if you're not generating something that's HTML? What if you're generating like an RSS feed like I was the other day? Well, all you got to do is dash dash OEXT and then the file extension that you want to compile to. So for example, dot, I don't know, CSS. Now we have a CSS file it's actually HTML, but it's a .css, just to, for a demonstration. Delete. Yes. And if you compile it again and you make a mistake, well, it saves the last version in a .back file, so you can, you know, get it back. Get it? So, let's test out this HTML. Oh, look, it worked. So, you see these things that it says on here? Do it. Do it. You won't. 90-something or whatever percent of you aren't subscribed. I don't even know anymore. And it doesn't matter. And so, remember that, no, Linux is not actually free if you don't value your time. Because the other week, literally two weeks ago, I was trying to use Windows to read an SD card that had a bunch of video files. It was standard FAT32 partition. And I booted up Windows and I plugged it in. And it made a little, like, boop, boop noise that it makes when you plug stuff in and then nothing happened it would not show up in the file manager and i was like what's going on why my sd card thingy not working and so i was like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna reboot here and see if rebooting helps so i did that and then it was like bah, 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 and then nothing appeared in the file manager once more and so i was like okay okay fine this isn't such a big deal i'll boot back into linux i'll copy the files over from there and then i'll boot back into windows well while I was fussing over the file manager, turns out Windows had set up a software update. And when I rebooted, it spent an hour saying, don't turn off your PC, we're updating. And so I wasted an hour of my time. I was just trying to do a green screen test before shooting to make sure my lighting was good. And I couldn't do it because I had to use After Effects and Windows was being stupid. And so, I waited for the update to happen. And you know what? It didn't even solve the problem. The SD card reader still does not work properly on Windows. I don't know why. It works fine on Linux. Anyway, after that, I booted into Linux. I copied the files over. I went back to Windows, accessed the files, did my green screen test, and it was fine. The lighting was not good, which means that I did have to wait and because I didn't want to shoot it and then have to reshoot because I had bad lighting, right? So the lighting, it was not perfect, and I went and I fixed it in the basement. But Windows wasted over an hour of my time for just being stupid, and that's why I don't use it, except for when I have to, which is occasionally. 
And so Linux is the second least time-wasting operating system I've ever used, with macOS being number one. Yes, you heard it here first, folks. macOS wastes less time, okay? It's a fact of life. And Windows wastes the most time out of all the operating systems I've ever used, which is only three technically, if you don't count various Linux distributions. I've never used BSD. I might give it a shot at some point, but it's not really worth it. I mean, nothing works on it. No, no software support at all except like KDE, which is the best thing ever. Except for my massive icons, which I don't know how to put back to their normal size. I updated and now they're giant. But hey, that's just a visual issue. Windows is worse. Windows sucks. Windows is garbage. Bye, everyone.